Hi guys, welcome back to the ZZ Mill Show. You know what this means. I have another uh, small owned business and this week it is a book and this book is called Omani's Diary. Um, I am, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm a huge reader, but this book is funny. It is very funny. It's hilarious. And the reason why I like this book here yeah, is because it's basically, it's, it feels like we're rewinding back to the old school days. And you know, I love old school, old school music. I love the old school vibes, the parties, the shabins and all those kind of things. This is basically what this book is about. Um, so it's talking about relationships. It's fictional by the way, but it's in it, it's talking about fake friendship, boyfriends, um, going out, sleepovers, all this good stuff. And it's basically just like a nostalgic, I can never say that word, but I just said it. It's like a nostalgic read. So you know how like, over quarantine we had um like sig no signal and it did the throwback the this monica v brandy all those type of things or verses it kind of takes me back to that type of era so it's um a female writer goes by the name of Chantel hall reed it's a really good book it's called amani's diary do not re touch or read my fucking stuff you remember back in the day when you used to write a diary? So it's basically, this is her diary and her diary entry. It's for grown people. This is a grown people's book, okay? Um, so make sure we're gonna put it, all the links in the bio. Look at my little things here, where all the funny bits are. Um, so make sure you hit them up. I'm gonna put all the links um, in the description box. Make sure we support um, businesses, small businesses. That's what we need to do. Publishing, we're, we're gonna, we're entering into every single world. You know what I'm saying? publishing, drinks, clothing, eco-friendly. We do it all here. So as I said, make sure you get the book. Bye. Peace. Hi guys, welcome back to the ZZ Mill Show. I'm ZZ Mill, thank you for locking in. And today we have a very special guest. I say this all the time, but today, I was actually quite nervous about today. Why? Because it's like we do the same thing. Oh, so okay. it's like now it's like getting somebody that's good <laughs> at braiding hair. You think you braid someone's hair that's good at braiding and you're thinking shit. Like they're gonna be, make they're like, ooh, the technique. Oh, okay, yeah, I see what you've done there. Or oh you didn't catch in the look. Before we started, uh Julie and I was talking about um edges and Julie said that she done her edges today for the first time and then I said, What's the what was the edge what was the thing? She said, I don't know. Which one's my close up? You're this is your one. You're getting it. It's good. It's good. I'm impressed. I sometimes I try to I don't know if this is the pressures of the world, but sometimes I think, you know, what, I'm not going to do my edges today. And then I feel like I have to. Oh, no, I never do them. I never do them. I saw a post once. There was like, we should stop. We should normalize not doing edges because that that feeds into this. You know, we have to look perfect and our natural state of our edges. It's not it's good not enough. Acceptable. And now and that's why we're gelling them down to make them look straight. And I thought, really, is it that deep? And I thought, yeah, it probably is that deep. I didn't even think of that. I just don't do them because I can't be bothered. Yeah. And I just think, if I don't do them, what's, what's anyone going to say? When I'm filming, I always think, I should do my edges, man. What if, what if I'm the first black person anyone's ever seen? <laughs> and, they <laughs> and they see my edges bare, like... I think, no, I should do my edges. But I think, no, actually, that's, that's not a real representation of what my hair is. And probably they wouldn't even actually know the difference. That's true. Only, like, within our community, we know, like, oh, she didn't lay her edges. Yes. But actually, people outside our community... Wait, probably... Zizi, do you think I'm not thinking about the community? No, because you said, what if they're the only, if I'm the first black person that I've seen? And I'm yes. saying, those people probably don't care about Okay, edges. fine. We care about, like, when we go on camera and people from our community that watch it, they'll be like, wow, I swear, what, Judy could, she didn't, like, brush Yeah, it. but I'm thinking of the people that maybe have never seen a black person before and what our community is thinking that I'm teaching those people. Right. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay. So yeah. someone's sitting at home going, wow, she couldn't lay her edges and now all these people are gonna think that's what black people's hair looks like. Like, like you get that what I'm time saying? when I came for the, that girl in Love Island and I got in trouble for it. What did you say? Because I said her wig was really high and I said it was misrepresentation of black women. <laughs> 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 and I got, in, <laughs> I got in so much trouble. Why is easy? Everyone came for me and I was like, but it was the same thought process as you because I was like, <laughs> She's going on national TV. Yeah, but why did you have to say it? Yeah, but it's... <laughs> Come on, this is me. I was just like... Can I tell you? Let me say this, yeah? Let me, yeah. I don't want to cut you. I've realised what this is going to be. You're right. It's two interviewers talking to each other. And if you were basically... We're going to be interviewing each other. Yeah, it's never going to end. <laughs> I know. And you but like to argue. I like to argue. It's, it's, it's never going to end. Basically. Remember when Andy said 35 minutes? <laughs> yeah, it's not happening. <laughs> Shut up, Andy. <laughs> so basically, when we're filming and someone black is on the screen, yeah. I'm so critical of what they look like. Right. So if I'm filming with a black girl or a black guy and 
there's something about him that I think, no, nah, the man are not going to accept that. Or they're going to call you out when they see that. In my head, I think, I can't let you go out like that. So I'll be fixing hair, like, oh, you need to do this, or anything that's going on. Right. I'll try to, because I am i don't want you to be on... Well, this is what I was saying, saying about her. I was saying, like, sis, you could have done the braids, no, you could have done everything, but the, it was... They're on an island. Yeah, but she could have done braids. Who's, who's Listen, laying her hair? Love Island is coming back, okay, in July. Would you want them to hire a black hairstylist? <laughs> if you're going on, please just do the braids or... <sighs> Don't do the leave out, the sun will. It's just do braids. Just everyone just do braids. It just looks bangs. It bangs on every... I've never seen a black girl that has worn braids and it doesn't, and it doesn't bang. look good. It You're always right. just look, it makes them look, brings out their beauty. But since we're actually on hair, this I knew is actually... I going to do this. I, see, this is what I mean. I, I'm not going to be able to do any like... I'm going to really try not to interview you. I'm, gonna, I'm, no, gonna, I'm just going to be talent. I'm going to be talent. Look. No, I want it to be like a free-flowing conversation. I'm going to slouch in my chair. Like oh, you got to mumble as well yeah, for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what are you saying? What are you and saying? then uh, tell us that you don't want the interview to come out next week. <laughs> As it goes, <laughs> you know how it goes. Anyway, so, uh, no, I was going to say about the hair, because we all, I've always known you as Julie with no hair. Yeah. Okay, and now it's Julie with the hair. Yeah. So what happened? No, I, what, what are you saying? What's the vibe? What are you thinking? Do you like it? I, I like Julie, but I like Julie with the no hair as well, but I feel like you've got the face for both. Which is strange, isn't it? What? It's like, not, it's that's not easy. It's a blessing. You should really feel, feel happy about that. It was a scary moment though, because when I sh when I had hair and I went to shave it, I thought, what if you shave your hair? It doesn't look good. Then it looked good. Yeah. I was like, cool. Then 10 years went by. So then when my hair started growing, because there's no barbers, I thought, what if my hair doesn't look good when it grows? Yeah. And then it was growing. And then my mum, we did the photo shoot for my mum's book. Right. And um, there was some BTS, shouts to Andy. There was some BTS pictures. He didn't take them, but he likes BTS. <laughs> um, um, there was some BTS pictures. And I was fixing my mum's uh, outfit and my brother goes to me, oh, your hair looks nice with an afro, man, you should have an afro. I was like, oh, so wait, I can get away with hair as well. Then it was growing longer, then I saw my boyfriend, he was like, no, nah, babe, you look good with an afro, you know? I was like, oh, bruh. So I thought, okay, cool. Right. I'm winning on both sides. Then I, obviously, braids come, I thought, what if the braids don't bang? But now the braids are banging. I feel really sexy with braids though. Braids are the one. I feel like my hair like this, any sort of natural hairstyles, I always feel like it brings out my beauty more. Yeah, which is, I don't know. I don't know if that's a good thing. No, I think, I mean over sometimes more than like weave or, okay. do you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes- Over like a straight hair. Over straight yeah. hair and all of that kind of stuff. I feel like when I have braids or faux locks or any natural hairstyles, I feel this is, this like, is you're, nice. like you've come from the motherland. Yeah, I feel like, do you know what? Yeah, Rasta. Like, listen, when I have my bre my my little faux locks, all the even guys that because I always say this, yeah, I don't know, as a fellow black woman, I say that certain hairstyles attract certain men. So with my braids, I always attract like the hotep with the Excuse beads me? hotep no, I've been gay guys with the beads. Sorry, is that, an, is that an actual? No, that's what I call them. <laughs> <laughs> I call them hotel. So you, you attract the cistern? <laughs> the cistern, like, yes, yeah, cistern. I'm just like, oh, okay, yes, I'm not okay, your yeah. You know, what, 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 what does the weave attract? Then the weave is like, yo, babes. Yo, babes. Yeah. The fraud guys. Maybe the not into illegal. Those. Why? I'm just saying because it's those type of guys, the flashy guys. What hairstyle attracts the, the good guy who was raised well, who's polite and has manners and asks for consent? Probably braids, <laughs> like but long braids, like, like to the, to the yeah, bum, yeah, yeah, those type of braids. But the the weave middle part, gelled funny. baby hairs. Wow, I swear, what what you got in you? What you got something in you? Yeah, like those type of guys. Have you got something in you? Yeah, I like when, this. when with certain hairstyles, if you do a little gelled thing, they start thinking like you've got some exotic stuff going oh. on in you and all this type of thing. Oh you know really? Those, yeah, those type of guys. <laughs> you know what? I haven't been chirped in so long. I didn't, first of all. I don't even know what that feels. <gasps> I lied. What? Well, you just said that you had a boyfriend and I was not aware of this. Okay, no, we can get to that in a second. <laughs> but I just lied. I was I got chirps the other day. Where? By a 23 year old child. Did they know who you were? No, nope. I was wearing a mask. And they took a I but couldn't believe it, Zizi. Did you feel pain a little bit though? You know what? I don't want to say I felt pain because I said to him, oh, I'm really flattered, but I'm much older than you. And he said, I didn't give you a compliment. And I thought, right, oh. you actually tried to boy me. <laughs> Like, you've come to ask me for my number. No, he said, he said, ah, oh, miss. No, his friend said, miss, my friend wants to talk to you. So I've looked at both of them and said, guys, I promise you, <laughs> I'm 33 years old in a minute. This is not it. And then he's come over the road, coming towards me. So I said, no, I said, no, I'm, 
it's not, it's not gonna, I'm too old, bro. Like. I promise you, it's not that. He said, oh, like what? Do you smoke? Do you smoke? I said, no. He said, oh, because I wanted to just come and chill with you and like, like, like a zombie and smoke. What? I said, I'm really flattered, but it's not that kind of party. He said, I didn't give you a compliment. Why are you flattered? I said, that's it then. And then what happened? You I off. said goodbye. Is this the new chat? Like, come and smoke. I don't know, mate. I was really confused. I was like, I had to call my boyfriend and say, babes, you know, I just got chirped by a 23 year old child. I couldn't believe it. The, the so other, part of me felt like, oh, bro, I still got it. But my part of me was like, ugh. But the young, ones, like the young ones like the older ladies. There's more mature ladies, I feel. I get young ones as well, because I feel... 23 is easy. I know, but they, they honestly feel as if they can help us. 23. Or change. I know there's absolutely nothing that they can do. Like, absolutely <laughs> nothing you can do for me. Not even in the slightest. Like, you can't even carry my shopping bags. But you can't even... Can't. Do you know what I mean? No. So. But the young ones honestly feel as if they can. I have a feeling that younger men actually will probably adore you more than guys our age because they feel like they have to live up to something. Yeah, they got you something wanna, to prove. You don't want to. You don't want a guy that's just adoring you twenty four seven. Do you not? No, no. I need you to do something today. I don't need you to be telling me that I look good again. Come True. on, again. Yeah, maybe because I'm just so loveless at the moment. Adoring sounds really good. I know, get the violins out for me. When's the last time you had a, had a babes? Oh, maybe about like a year, two years ago. You've been single ever since? Yeah. What's going on? Pandemic takes a year out. So you've been single for a year. Do you know what? It's, it's mad. And I also, I feel like at this stage in my life, as things are starting to warm up for me and stuff. In, if, what do you mean? What's in like mean? my career, okay. and things are starting yeah, yeah. to happen and whatever. I don't know if I actually want that. Do you know, I don't know. No, no, no. What do you mean? You know, like how guys, they... <laughs> what are you saying? You don't want a gold digger? No, I don't. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I don't want... I want to experience travelling. I sound like... You know, like... You want a hoe face. What are you saying? You want a hoe face? I don't know if I want a hoe face. You're saying that you're popping now? No, it's not that Your I'm Your videos pop are popping. People, <laughs> no. people recognise you on the street. What I'm saying... So now you don't want to be tied down to a one singular bay. You want a hoe face. You want to travel the world. You want an international bay. Plus uh, at home local bay, plus uh, maybe you know different different continents. Kind yeah, of. that's fine, babes. Maybe chucking a few girls in there as well. Oh yeah, do you just, know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just like, but I don't. But then on the oh, other gosh. hand, is that what happens when you start popping? But then, no. <laughs> <laughs> but then, even then, I still want companionship. So every uh, time I'm speaking to my friends about what I want, they look at me and they say, Z, I don't even think you know what you want. I agree with them. So that's why at the moment, I'm just like, it is what it is. Do you get what I mean? I agree with I'm, them. I'm and I will to... also say this to you, you're heading down a very slippery slope, babe. Of what? The fact that you want all types of babes, but you want someone who adores you at 23, and you want a no, companion. Wait, wait, and, and wait. you want a companion. <laughs> Everybody heard it. I didn't no, make it no, up. We're I recording. I didn't, We're recording sound. I didn't say that I wanted, a bay at 20, I wanted a 23 year old bae. Yeah, okay. I said the, 20, the younger guys, they are more, they adore you more. Okay, so you want a 25 year old bae. The point is, you want a lot of things. Is, and I'm telling yeah. you, it's a slippery slope because you might, you might catch the right one and you're too busy wanting everything else and then the right one goes. Yeah, but no, if I. If and the now right you're just alone comes, with someone calling you sistrin. <laughs> That is the worst thing I would hate. <laughs> I hate anyone that calls me sister. It's a wrap. I'm just like, why are you doing that to me? I just it really, uh, I feel like it's a th another thing that uh, black men do to let you know I don't find you attractive, yeah. but, I, but I respect you. You're my sister and you call, yeah. And it's like, all right, I don't need you to re let me know that you don't. I wonder where that comes from. I, d I don't know. I'm trying to think, if I met my guy and he called me a sister and Okay, so yeah, you we keep wouldn't. making reference to this to this guy. I'm not making reference. He's I, a part of my life. Yeah, but I, it's like I, me talking about my best friend. I know, but I don't think I've. Do you? You don't really. Do you speak about him? To yeah, I speak to, I speak to him every day. No, no <laughs> I mean, like I I was gonna say because I I looked and I was thinking I don't think I've ever seen. I could have missed it because there's so much things that on the internet mm. where I've heard you speak about your love life. I did on a podcast once, and I'll be honest. I, I came home and I felt a bit uncomfortable. Really? After, yeah. So how long have you been with him? Oh my gosh. I've known him for seven years. We've been together in that time more times than we haven't been together. Does that make sense? No, explain. Like we've been on and off. Oh, okay, right. But if I put all the times that we've been on together, yeah. it's longer than we've been off. Oh, okay, right, I get what you mean. But yeah. Okay, so you've had him from the beginning then, so it makes sense. From the beginning? Yeah, because it's- Of time? <laughs> well, since, do you know what I mean? You've had him from the beginning. We were, yeah, we were together when I was on Rinse FM. Okay, so he's seen the journey then? Yeah, he's, he's been about. 
is it better that way, do you feel? Like to have that person that has known you from the beginning, understands you, understands the journey? Um, I, oh man, is that, that's hard to say because I haven't seen the other, I haven't experienced the other version, but I really like it. I definitely mm. like this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, as, as well, because he is, he's actually a, a part of why my journey has gone this way as well. So there's been times where okay. if he wasn't around, maybe I wouldn't have made a certain decision. So he actually is actively a part of my choices and my vibe. And when I got the Beats job, I was so shook. And I remember just being, like, looking at the contract. I was getting calls from people. I've got to go to LA. All this stuff was happening. And I was getting scared, bro. I was just like, no, nah, no, nah, this is not, like, I shouldn't do this. It doesn't feel right. I was just nervous. And then he said to me, um, he was a bit rude, but he was just like, oh, okay, if you don't want to do it, then stop moaning and just tell him you don't want a job. <laughs> and you I thought, like, no, I do want a job. He said, well, then it's sharp. Then, isn't it? like, you want him to be like, no, babe, I understand. <laughs> I get where you're coming you from. I know it's tough. Yeah, that like, he well, was not on it. you deserve this. <laughs> yeah. You, you know how hard you've worked for it. <laughs> Embrace it, man. Yeah, I wanted all, all of that. that. And he didn't get he it. He said to me, yeah, just like, turn the job down then. And I thought, oh, okay. Not going to get no sympathy here. I'm just going to have to take it and stop moaning. It. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, I'm definitely happy he's been he's been around through all of that stuff because it's been a bit mad. What was it, What was that like? Because you kind of went straight from Rinse FM straight to doing yeah. beats. And I would say at the time... Compared to the other like headliner DJs that Beats had chosen, mm. you was pretty unknown. Yeah, yeah, People yeah. didn't really know who you were. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? So how did that feel? I've realised my whole career, I'm always the unknown one. When I started doing Drive Time on Rinse, I was unknown. Right. People didn't know me. Same with Beats. Ebro's like 20 years in on New York. He's on New York radio every morning, breakfast radio. Everybody in New York City knows Ebro. Zane's like just the Radio One guy. And so I was unknown there. <clears throat> and then with Catfish, same. Like, um, it's a global TV show. So people are seeing it and saying, who's this girl? Yeah, like, true, true, <laughs> it's true. only my people that are like, what well on Julie? Yeah, Everyone else yeah, is like, yeah. where's Neve? <laughs> and I'm like, rah, like, you're not happy for me and Uber, but cool. So I'm always unknown. It doesn't, I, I, it's cool. I don't mind. It, it makes me feel like I'm so, it makes me feel like it's a journey worth doing. Because you imagine, I wouldn't be as excited to do something that everyone's already done. Yeah, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's good because I can, it's a nice blank platform for me to really leave a stamp. Um, but it is definitely scary though. But it feels like every time you go into something new, it's a very high level. Because I say no to loads of things. Do you? Yeah, in between I'm saying no, bear. Yeah. And is that something that's scary? Because when you left Beats, this uh, Catfish wasn't obviously lined up, was no. it? You left Beats and just thought, this is, I've, I've had enough now. <laughs> to me, that is scary as shit. Mm, yeah, uh, no, I wasn't scared leaving Beats because I felt like I was finished. It was done. I feel like, especially, no, I would say, especially sometimes I feel in like, young urban i should say urban anymore people don't like saying urban but what are we saying just black now like uh, well uh, that's what but it's not black people within the culture is it there's oh, yeah. that's what i'm saying it's not just black so i don't really mind uh the word the streets uh, the streets the streets culture <laughs> the, the underground culture and we have this thing of okay so you're leaving this yeah. that means you must be going on to something bigger yeah and there's the pressure of that thinking all the time okay i know that this has run its course yeah but i don't want everyone else outside to be thinking okay so what's julie gonna do now then you yeah. left apple because to a lot of people apple is the pinnacle that's oh as, yeah as big as you know you probably i was think speaking to people get. and they were saying you know why are you leaving i was like oh because like, i want to go <laughs> it was like yeah but why What's wrong? You need to stay there. All this stuff and stuff. And I was like, oh shit, this is awkward now because I didn't really, I didn't, one, I wasn't trying to uh, like take other people's thoughts into consideration. Right, yeah. And two, it felt right to leave. So when people started opposing it, I thought, oh, maybe I've made the wrong decision. But I, I'll never call the pandemic a blessing because it's been, so, it's been hell for many people, even some that are close to me. But leaving my job into a time where everyone had to stop working was the biggest, uh, it was so, it was a great thing for me. Right, yeah. Because if I had left and everyone's getting new jobs, like my man's starting this, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, she's gonna do, host this TV show. If people's careers were still going, then maybe I would have left, been at home the next day, like, oh, you've just left your job and X, Y, Z people are, you know, yeah. getting all these new things and you're just sitting at home. It would have been more scary. But, but leaving like to a time together. where, yeah, everyone stopped working. Yeah. So I'm sitting there, People are still phoning me. The, one of the things I wish more people knew is that perception can get you so much further than you realize. Just the fact that people thought I'd left to go somewhere else meant that when I was emailing them, they replied quickly. Right. Because I was like, she's left Apple. 
she must be onto something big. So when I'm emailing just with no nothing to say, just to network and see where things are at. Mm. Everyone's replying, they're excited to talk to me because they don't know what's going on and I'm not saying anything. So they yeah. think it's a big, you know what I mean? So for me, I just took that time to speak to people, think about what I was into, not do anything because I've been working straight for 10 years. And then slowly but surely, things started to make sense. And then random catfish was random, yeah. random, 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 out of the blue, just to, just from nowhere. I think sometimes us as, um, as black women, mm the space is difficult for us anyway. So I commend you for being like, you know what? I don't actually know what's gonna happen, yeah. but I know my time up is here. Yeah. And it, that's almost how it happened. Cause I've only been doing ZZ Mills properly now for like the past, I would say like eight months. Okay. It's actually been my job. Yeah. I'm making money from it. But the same thing happened to me. I basically got made redundant from my nine to five job right. in the middle of the pa well, pandemic. Yeah. And I was like, shit like what am I going to do now because <laughs> yeah. yeah I make a bit of money from ZZ but it's not to to be you know not have a nine to five yeah. or do another job yeah. so what am I going to do but it was weird because in the pandemic stuff started to pick up yeah. for me yeah so I got made redundant and I was thinking okay well I don't have to do this big you know like when you're doing nine to five and you're still doing your creative thing and you have to then Trying at to one balance. point decide okay I know I'm still not making enough money but I actually don't have the time to do to, both because yeah. work is not going to allow me to take all this time off anymore and you have to make that horrible decision that okay I'm just actually gonna have to take a leap of faith yeah. and here it was like okay well you've been chucked into the deep end now just see what happens yeah. and yeah in that time everything is kind of picked up and it's like this is my job now it's yeah. like a thing where I'm like oh wow I have to stop saying oh yeah I'm just gonna go and film this little thing <laughs> I'll be like oh yeah I'm going to work <laughs> so weird it's so weird for me because I'm like I'll be like yeah I used to be but like, yeah, I'm just going to do some filming after work. Yeah. And they'll be like, oh, okay, but you just interviewed Wiley. That's not a little filming. Do you yeah. know what I mean? You're not, and, but to me, it still is, well, I just came from work. That's, a bad, that's a bad trait because our, our families and uh, I guess families, community, cult, everything has made us feel like our jobs are not real jobs. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So even when I was the same, I'd be like, oh, yeah, my, my friend would be like, how was your day? And I'd be like, yeah, it was cool. And then I'll put up a picture of me and Britney Spears and he'll be like, Wait, you interviewed Britney Spears? And I was like, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, it was all right. Yeah, it was cool. It was a good day. So, because for some reason, you just feel like, because no one was ever gassed about this job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one ever said, when you grow up, you should be a, you know what I'm saying, an interviewer. Blah, blah, blah. So it doesn't feel like yeah, a this, real I job. Feel, yeah, I feel like this is still a new, a yeah. new element in yeah. the culture. Do you know what I mean? And then it's a new, and then on top of that, we're classed as personalities as well. Yes. So before the interview is just like, okay, hi, how's your day? But now it's, oh, you're going to sit down with Julie? Mm -hmm. Oh, sick, because people know yeah. that the type of interviews Julie's going to give is not like anybody else. So yeah. it, it's like a weird, and I think people are still trying to get used to it, especially kind of what, what I do, mm -hmm. like being quiet. It's still people are getting used to who's this person. Yeah. But I challenge go, you to, from going forward, I challenge you to make sure that you say, I'm going to work. Yeah, oh yeah, I will. I'm going to say that now. I'm going to work now. I've got to get up tomorrow and go to work. <laughs> go to work. So have you ever, because um, I've heard it before, yeah. um, and I, would, I started doing this thing now where I speak to people before I interview someone. So I'd be like, oh, I'm going to have Julie on today. Like, what do you think about Julie? What's your, like, I've got Oh, a, do you? Yeah, because I like to see what people's perception of people are. And okay, what, cause, spill the tea. Well, what did you hear? Well, <laughs> no. So, <laughs> like... Everyone, people know who Julie is, yeah. but the first thing they automatically do is say, oh, Skepta and Jamie's sister. Yeah. Is that annoying? <sighs> I've tried to move past it now. But is it? Is it, it depends on what, it depends on the situation. As if that's the only thing that you're, oh, oh, right, she's Jamie and Skepta's sister. As if you haven't bought your own entity, your own brand. But if they don't know my brand, then if that's genuinely how they know me. Yeah. Like, they could say, oh, that's Jason's sister. Like, my little brother's friends would be like, oh, you're Jason's sister. Right, right, right. It's okay. not offensive. I yeah, am yeah, Jason's yeah. sister. Yeah. It's just because, obviously, he's not a big, massive, famous grimer. It's, yeah. it's then, so, at first, it was annoying. Because I thought, raw, like, I've got a name. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, but, now, but now, I think, if that's your entry point into who I am, then so be it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's still other stuff to discover. I'd be annoyed if it was if I was Captain Jamie's sister and that was all I was. Right. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Then I'd be like, raw, like, 
I'm just, I just don't have any other purpose. What about when people have said, so going back to the Beats by Dre thing mm. and everyone was saying, oh, she's only got this because of Skepta. Oh, or okay. she only, like, you know, <laughs> the, you know, because you wasn't a known person. Yeah, so yeah. how did she manage to do this? Oh, it's only because of Skepta. The reason you know what? I actually this. found out that I did get that job because of my brother. Oh, okay. Well, that's, I said that wrong. I found out that he was the reason why they even decided to find out who I was. So. Okay. Originally, they were looking around for the London person. Right. And shout to Julie Pilot. Um, she met Jamal Edwards, SBTV, and he was talking to her about just radio. Who's on radio in the UK, blah, blah, blah. She was trying to find a woman that was a presenter. Yeah. And then she met, I think she met Grace and Junior. I think she met Grace and Junior, Skepta, sorry. She met Grace, Grace and Skepta. And then he's just said, oh yeah, my sister's a radio presenter. Yeah. And then she said, oh, is she? And then she's found out about me, listened to my radio show. And then, so obviously, it's not because, of, I didn't get a job because of him, but, but he said, oh, my sister's in yeah, radio. Yeah, yeah. And then she's obviously listened to me on radio, liked what she's heard, and then we've gone to Nando's and had chicken wings. And then I got the job. Not strict like that, but it's gone in that direction. So I remember thinking, rah, did I? <laughs> I remember thinking, rah, did I get this job? Like, it hit me for a minute. I was like, oh my God. But then I thought, I've never, I've never been the oldest sibling. I don't know what that feels. Are you the oldest in your? Um. Well, I'm my mum's only child. Okay. But I've got brothers from my dad, from so different. I've been. Okay. I feel like I've been raised. I always have been raised as the only child. As the only child. Yeah. But the oldest sibling, I've never understood the pressure that that comes with. Right. And for me, if I was the oldest sibling, I would want to be doing things with my younger siblings. You know what I'm saying? Whether that be that, um, you know, I've got a moving company and my little brother's moving house and I say, you can use one of the vans. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, uh, anything, yeah. you help, it's your family. Yeah, yeah. So if my brother is in a position where he can tell someone that is trying to give someone a job that his sister does what she's looking for, is he going to like not tell her? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah, it, yeah. it doesn't make any sense. So for me, I don't care if I got a job because you found out through Skepta or Jamie or Jason. It doesn't really bother me. I'm still sick of my job. If I was on there and I was dead. Yeah. Then, I, then it would be like, well, oh, that's awkward, but I'm I think it's really good. I, the way you put it, I, I, I proper respect that. And I feel as if that should just be the mentality anyway. Mm. But I feel it, sometimes we have this weird thing of everything has to be done on your own. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you're not respected unless you went through the jungle and you ripped yeah. the lion apart with your bare <laughs> hands. And then you got to the Apple building was like, I'm here. I'm here. Listen to my demo. <laughs> like, it's almost, you don't get the accolades unless it's, you know, you, yeah. you bled or you cried. You, you, and, yeah. it's, and that's what I think is important that we all should be building something if, if even it's not your for your direct sister or your blood sister mm. for other young people coming Community, up or, yeah 100 yeah. yeah and it it, it it does happen that way. the people that want you to bleed and tear off a lion's head <laughs> they're not into i don't think that those people are necessarily into the longevity of something yeah true i think they're more into the announcement of it yeah, you know what yeah, i'm saying yeah. oh yeah. i've got the job oh wow you've been working really hard well done and if they don't listen to your show yeah you know what I'm saying? They're not actually invested in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. They just want to give you a thumbs up and say, well done, you worked really hard for it, smashed it, and now they're on to the next, you know what I'm saying? Whereas for me, even if I got the job because of who I was related to, I then worked for five years, and there are multiple artists that I wouldn't even have to ring them for them to come forward and say, you know what, if it wasn't for Julie, I wouldn't be here, I wouldn't have got this, this wouldn't have happened for me, this person wouldn't have known about my music. Yeah. There's been so many people that have, have messaged me, artists and, um, just like public figures that will say, oh, I love this artist that you play. I remember Black Fort messaged me and said, oh, I love Benji Flow. And in my head, I was thinking, you're Black Fort. That is mad. And then I'm thinking, that's Benji Flow. That is mad. Yeah. So the, the starting point, you can say whatever you want about it, but the five years of my time there yeah. and what we did as a team, me and my radio team, is uh, it's untouchable to me. That's How? what's most important. How does it, how has it been for you um, as a black woman, like navigating this area? Have you found it hard or has, because sometimes, uh, I almost sometimes want to speak to black women. I want them to say, no, actually, I found it quite easy. I'm going to say that I've actually had a really good time. Oh, that's, you know what? <laughs> it's not everyday struggle, you know? Yeah, no, it's not. It's, it's not everyday, it like, yeah, it's been so hard for me yeah. because, you know. No, I've had a really good time, but it's also taught me an important lesson of, even if I've had a really good time, it doesn't mean, you know, remember when Little Wayne was like, there's no racism and Common, right, I think right. Common said it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Black people were like, what the fuck are you talking about? You can, it's easy to fall into that gap where because everything in your bubble is just hunky-dory, right, yeah. like, it must be the same for everybody else. Mm -hmm. So it being really 
a, just a nice experience for me and I've never had any issues as I'm the black woman who's doing X, Y, Z. It's made me want to be more open to listening to black women who have had those issues. Right. Because then I start to think, oh, it's just, I think it's good to know what's happening outside of your circle. Mm -hmm. And it makes me question certain things that maybe have been easy for me. And it's made me say, okay, cool, if that was easy for me, how do I make it easy for the next person? Do you ever think why it was easy for you? Just do you ever think to yourself, why was it easy for me? I think I'm just an aggy person. I'm really aggy, yeah? And um, I, don't go where I, I don't go where I'm not wanted. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I know a lot of women that I've spoken to who they're in spaces that aren't owned by them or they're in spaces that they weren't necessarily welcomed in in the first place. Yeah. So they've already had to get in the door and now they're looking around and no one's really trying to be receptive to them. So it's a fight every single day. Mm -hmm. Whereas me, I sat at home and I said, I want to be on Rinse FM or One Extra. And I piloted for those two stations and I got on Rinse and it was, that was it. I wasn't trying to be on Capital Choice. I wasn't trying to do, I wasn't trying to get into the doors where I didn't know and understand what was going right, on. Okay, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And then same, Beats. That job came, was a phone call, was an email, sorry, on my website of just, hey, Julie, but it wasn't me going and saying, I want to leave rent, where can I go? And now I'm looking for a new, uh, it's never been that. Mm. I'm just where I am until I want to be somewhere else. And then I'll just go to that next place. So you started a production company. Yeah. Called Don't, Don't Trust, Trust the, the internet. internet, which is so funny. Because <laughs> it literally resides on the internet. <laughs> Don't trust the internet. Uh, honestly, I love the name of that company. Why, why did, is, is that another reason why you started it? Because of basically what you were just saying just now. Because you um, start navigating your own, doing your own thing. You know what, I realized that my whole life, I've just been in service to people. Whether it's, I think it's because I'm a middle child. Right. But I'm just always in service. I'm in service to my brothers, my parents, my friends. I'm always a person that's trying to help, mm. support. What do you need? What's happening? Blah, blah, blah. I never, re I struggle with putting myself first. And then it just fell into my career. My career is all about service, about shining light on new artists, talking about new music scenes. Everything is, I'm always in service to something. I'm always in service to community, to whatever. So don't trust the internet. It's not even really a production company. It's just a creative media house, I would say it is. And it's just about me finding a way to build a solid platform that continues to put that service back into the community in whatever way that is. Do you do film or just how does it work? Everything. Okay, cool. and everything and anything I want to do. If I've got an idea for a show like Julie's Top 5 is Don't Trust the Internet. Don't at me, my parties that I do will be Don't Trust the Internet when we're allowed back outside for two weeks. Julie basically <laughs> came today and was just like, listen, I was driving on the roads and we're going back into lockdown. Guys, we're going back inside. No, don't There's no say carnival. That. Car no way. Look, you're getting upset. You're getting upset. But there's not going to be a carnival. These lot are outside. They're supposed to be doing tables of six. They're pushing the tables together <laughs> and they're having a good time outside. We're going back in. Yeah, but hopefully it lasts for one week. Everyone just gets excited. We're and oh. we're going back inside. But when we're allowed outside, I'm going to do a sick, I'm going to throw donut meat parties again. Well, they're going to be amazing. Well, then I've, I've been to, I went to one. They, it was, a, that, was that was like one of the last things I went to. Who was performing? Do you remember? Dam, Dam Shack was performing. Yeah, Dam Shack was the last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, the that one was the that last I, one. Yeah. Oh. And I, yeah, and it was, it was a vibe. It was a vibe. I remember I had to get up early the next morning, but I still was there. <laughs> no, I had like Good Morning Britain the next morning. Oh, did you? Yeah, and it was like, they do early call time, like seven o'clock. They're and you the car in the light. club all like, the way to the lights on. Mm, yes, because yeah, you, yeah. you have to. Because you have to. Because I live by like, you never know. You never know. So you just have fun. Yes. What is the point of just always being I agree. inside your house, bored, out of your mind? I agree. If I had a boyfriend, I would probably stay in most of the time. Why? So we can just bone all the time. That is so dead. Yeah, like just bone and like just I really hope fun. you get a guy who or a girl who's good at boning because imagine you're inside boning and it's dead bones. Oh my God, <laughs> literally, I was talking about this with some girl the other day. She's like, I'm committed to women actually experiencing real orgasms. Well, this is a I've thing. Had enough. It's, but it's a thing, this isn't is it? It's a thing, yeah. It's bad. Yeah. It's a, that's the real, that's the pandemic. I love that you think you're going to be inside all day boning. No, but for like the first two months. Okay. And then I will get bored of each other and then we'll just go out and do our own stuff and come back and just not condoning cheating. Is this your idea of a relationship? No, like... And you, and you don't know why you've been single for two years? <laughs> <laughs> no, like, we're going to go out, we'll have fun and we'll meet back at home and all that kind of stuff. You know what? I'm not here to judge. No, I, I just hope you find someone who also wants no, to do that. No, I, I understand what... Really, I, I know what... Really, I, I'm the friend that will be... will say, just... You're being a bit unreasonable. Relationships are not a bed of roses, etc. Bloody, bloody, bloody. Who's blah. a friend that says that to you, though? 
oh, I've got one friend, she says that to me all the time. Okay, fine. Like, I've got, I've got, I've got realistic friends. Okay. And I think that's why I'm quite harsh, because I've got harsh people around me. Okay, yeah. Like, if I'm doing something dumb, my friends don't sugarcoat it. They're not going to be like, oh, Z, you know, maybe. They'll, they'll say, you're dumb. What's the last dumb thing that you did? Oh, just keep talking to this guy that I know I shouldn't do. And every time I speak to my friend, I can hear the disappointment in her voice. <laughs> like, it really upsets me as well. <laughs> like, I can hear the disappointment. She's probably just like, oh, so what's going on with you and Thingy? I'm like, yeah. She's like, okay. Oh, no. The thing with that one, I just feel like you just do what you want with that and just see how it goes. Let me ask you this question. Go on. Where is it going? Who the fuck knows? I don't know. Is it because you're locked inside? No. Do you just... think if you was allowed out and you was living your life, you'd be speaking to this guy? Yeah, yeah, probably. Really? Yeah, the attachment is really there. What's, it, what's wrong with you? No, because we just get along so well. But he's not good enough for you. Okay, but let's talk about catfish. Because catfish, right, you've just started catfish, okay? <laughs> and um, I just want to know, because you're so, like, brutal, right? Clearly. How, like, that whole cold yep. conversation, yep. how are you doing this? Because... <laughs> I don't understand. How are you doing this? Because cat, they, when I watch Catfish, I'm thinking, surely you know that you're getting mugs. <laughs> and I feel no, that it's your not like is, that. Go and tell, speak to me. Whoa, perfect example. You. Oh my god. Chatting to this brother, you know he's not the boom ting. But for some reason, your friends are saying, ZZ, let it go. You're still answering the phone, doing text messages, sending nudes. I don't know why you're doing it. I don't do nudes, you Okay, know. sure. No. Anyway, <laughs> nudes come in different versions. It's not always just naked, you know what I'm saying? Nudes is anything where shit's popping. I don't do that. I don't like it. So you don't take any pictures of your body? Not really, because I don't... In I'm lingerie? Not, yeah, because I'm not really like a confident person when it comes to my body. Really? Yeah, it's not for me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you some things. Oh, okay. Angles. I'm going to teach you some things. All right, let's go. Yeah. Cool, go do on. you walk around the house naked? Yeah, all the time. And you don't enjoy it? You don't walk past the mirror By and myself. Say, By myself, not with guys there. Oh, so it's the person that makes you feel a little bit less confident. I just like... Do you have sex with a light on? I have, like, the light dimmed. I hate... And, like... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I fucking hate it. I don't like bright lights. It's just like, oh my god, things are going on. You can see everything. So you want to have sex in the daytime with the curtain open? Oh yeah, I do, but I still try to do it like... What do you do? Keep your eyes closed? <laughs> <laughs> You're just mad, like, I'm just going to get to where shit is. Like, get it over like, oh, I'm just like, hurry up and get on top. So You're so stupid. No, like, I'm just like, hurry up and get on top so you can't see what's going on. No, Zizi, this is not it. Yeah, I'm just... I this means know. you're definitely having six out of ten sex easily. No, 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 if no. If you're no, not enjoying no. your own body and no, whilst you're having sex, I, it's dead. I enjoy it when the lights are dim. That's rubbish, though. No, you can't even see what's going on. Okay, back to catfish. Go so on. So anyway, <laughs> people like you, right. who you know, your gut knows what's popping. Your gut knows it. You yeah. know that in a minute, Zizi, we're gonna have to tell this guy it's a block and report a spam because this is not going anywhere. And I'm yeah, but you still. You still keep going. You still answer the messages. You still... Yeah. That's that's how... That's essentially how people get catfished. Right. Okay. Because they know. And one of the things that over the time that we've been filming that we see is that when you know and your family and friends are telling you low it, yeah. you, start to tell, you start to tell them less. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, true. And when you're going somewhere or, you know, you, are, you FaceTimed him three times and he hasn't picked up the, the calls, you, tell, you don't tell them that bit. But you say, oh, you know, he sent me flowers. You tell them all the good stuff, you leave all the bad stuff out, he or she, yeah. whatever. So the whole show is, it isn't me judging people going, oh, how would you let that happen to you? It's understanding why, because everyone's got a different reason. I don't know what your reason is for talking to this guy, but for some we reason... We have a really good connection. Apparently. So everybody's got reasons. Some people have low self-esteem. Some people have been single for a long time. Some people are single mothers and they just want a, a connection. They want some kind of, you know, what you said you have. Um... So everyone's got um, different reasons. So it's about us understanding. <laughs> it's about me and Uber. We understand the situation. Yeah. And then we say, okay, cool. Now it's time to get this person answers. Right. Because even if, sometimes it's not a catfish as well. That's the other thing. Okay. So it's about us getting them answers and then them saying, okay, cool. Now I've got these answers. I can make better decisions or I can continue speaking to the person if it's a real person. But the point is we have to give them some kind of closure. And that you, when I spoke to you before, you said it's been emotionally draining. Yes. It really? Yeah. Have you, but did you bust a tear? A tear? I've done a full Michael Jordan ugly cry on camera. No. Yeah, yeah. I'm really worried when people see it, I'm going to be a meme. It's all right, it's fine. I'm I definitely going to be a meme. Is it because you felt sad for the person? For, you know what, I don't want to ruin it, but, but there's this, um, there was this girl, this black girl from Leeds, and you know when you can see yourself in Yeah, someone, yeah, 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 yeah. She's young. She's confident, but she's got insecurities. 
you know, she's like confused as to why this brother's, she's like, I don't know why he's talking to me, like he shouldn't really be talking to me, but he's like, he speaks to me all the time. Blah, blah. So I can see that she's, she's hanging a lot of her self-esteem on the fact that this brother's chatting to her yeah, and he's yeah, a good looking yeah. guy. So then when we're finding out stuff that is not matching up with what she knows, she just broke down. She was like, why am I not deserving of someone who, you know oh, what I'm saying? No. And I was there, like, it's been really hard to adjust to being on TV because I'm, I don't have lots of emotions. Right. And then when I do have them, I'm quite stiff faced. Mm. So my producers will always be like, Julie, are you angry? Or that, like, <laughs> we don't know what's wrong with you. And I'm just like, mm. So I'm just sitting there looking at her, listening to her talk and I can just feel the tears coming out. I'm like, I'm looking at her, I'm trying to look away. Couldn't look away. And when she started crying, I was bawling. Oh no. I was bawling, bro. Proper bawling. Yeah. So it's, it's about people get to see a, a more sensitive side to you, which is good. Is it? Well, yeah. Well, Andy's always telling me that they need, it humanises me if I when do. When the last time that you cried? I cried on this show with my mum, I cried. Yeah, but come on, when you're talking to your mum, that's an easy cry. When's the last time you cried? Oh, I cry, I cry a lot, you know, I'm a crier. You I cry just, when you're watching TV? Yeah, 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 all the time. I'm like, this is us. If you don't watch This Is Us, this is us. This is, is us is not a show that people should watch. No, this is us, you'll be crying. It's you'll devastating. Be, I know, it's like, it's, it's like um, tra trauma yeah. every time you watch it. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I cry, I cry a lot. But you, so you said you're the protective, per, you're like in your family, you're the protective one, right? Yeah. So how do you then not, I've never ever seen you come for people online when they're coming <laughs> for, your, for your family. Cause there's been bad times like, you know, Skepta might do something that people are a bit like, you know, and like, you get what I mean? And then You know what it is? If they don't say anything, then there's nothing for me to say. Like, if you say something about Junior and he doesn't respond, like, he's a big man. What am I jumping in for? To say what? You don't ever feel at any time you have to defend them. Nah, also people online are not real. Why do people say this? They are. They're not. Go and find me someone online now. Go outside there. True. And find me, they're not real people. So who am I even speaking to? Am I speaking to a 13 year old you who's True. on their, compu their parents' computer quickly I'm for 10 minutes? I'm always getting drawn out, stupid girl. Oh, nah, just ignore, mute even. You don't mute people. I always, I do, I've started doing that now, muting and also restricting the comments. That yes. is the best thing. Cause they feel like they're chatting to you and yeah. all your fans will follow, but really only you and them can do the thing. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, you're doing all of this. Cause you think everyone can see you. No one can and see no you. And no one can see you yeah. apart from me and you. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I just, no, like, you gotta get the mutant. Like, yeah, I've never, I've never seen it, and I always thought to myself, wow, like there's certain so things will happen. I'll be like, what, what Julie thinks about this. I save all of my stuff for. I, I keep my energy for real. Like, when something in real life happens, um, how do your group chats, your family group chats work? Because <laughs> like, I was looking at things today. I saw like spreads. You all matching clothes, and <laughs> you know this thing. You, you and Jamie done a cover to get us. Yeah. You did notions together. Yeah. So I'm thinking. How does this work? Do you just um, no? At the moment, the group chats are very much centered around our nieces. Oh, okay, because right. they're the same age, so it's always like Rose has learned how to ride a balance bike. Oh, okay, right. River's getting a new bunk bed. It's very much that. Okay. It's my mum talking about the COVID nineteen vaccine. Oh, okay. And she's sending us articles as to like whether or not she's gonna take it, and we're like, mum, <laughs> stop, stop, stop being on Facebook. It's lies. <laughs> it's all lies. And then my little brother Jason doesn't say anything in the family group. Oh, okay. He's just not really in there. Oh, okay. He's there, but he's not there. He'll say what, every once in a while. And then my dad, he just tells us that we're blessed. Oh. He'll just say, you're blessed, guys. My children, you're wonderful. You're blessed. That's it. It's just, an, it's a nice vibe. It's a nice, uh, yeah. Maybe like one day I'll come out for family dinner or something like that. We don't have family dinners. Oh, that's a shame. We're going to start though. I used to have the fattest crush on Skepta. Did you? Oh, he's gorgeous. I don't know how to take it. How how long ago are we, are we talking about now? Like five weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's a weird one. Honestly, that's a weird one. People thinking that my brothers are attractive is weird. I've had people like like move mad. I can imagine. Yeah, move proper mad, and I don't know how to take it. I don't, honestly, I'm just like I don't even know. What should I say? Just be like, yeah, it runs in the family. You're all good-looking family, though. No. Fair, but you know, like when a when a person's saying to you, you know, your brother, yeah, oh my gosh, you think, ooh, like, what are yeah, you telling you, me? What do you want me to do with the information? Just yeah, to take, they they're hoping that you're gonna be like, do you know, what, I'll, okay, I'll let him know. And that's what every, <laughs> anyone's <laughs> yeah. Do you want me to let him know? Oh no, I've I've sent the DMs a couple of times. Love struck, guys. How did it go? Nothing. Uh huh? Nothing. You didn't even get a <laughs> no. He, did he you was, get a little double tap? A little double tap. <laughs> oh, that's so disrespectful. <laughs> You got Ed, is what just happened. No, no, I, I mean, <laughs> not necessarily. He said, he said, thank this thee. Is, oh, and then okay. We and then the, but 
you know, but I just had to let him know he was very good looking. If you, if not you, even on a, not even like, oh yeah, let's. It's just you gotta let. Sometimes you gotta let black you appreciate men know that you're that a good looking a guy. Man. Okay, fair. Enough. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but you put love shot guys. Not you should have said, you're a very good looking guy. You know what I'm saying? Love shot guys. What does that even mean? Well, maybe I'll try that next time. I, let me know how that goes. I'll not just. Cause... Julie said that I should <laughs> let you know that you're. <laughs> No, try it. Honestly, I'll gonna, try, I'll it. It. try it. I'll try it. Yeah, let me know how it goes. Hopefully my other team doesn't see this. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, you're sliding in to DMs, yeah? Is that what you're doing oh now? Oh, my God. Um, any amazing. questions for me? Because it's telling us that we have to wrap up. We have to wrap up? I know. It's because we've gone so quick. You're lying. Have you got any questions for me? Um, I did want to prepare a question for you. Go on. So, the question that I prepared was, what is your goal? Oh God, these questions. Jeez, I should have known you was gonna come with real <laughs> questions. Yes, ZZ Mills, what is your career goal? My career goal would be to interview as much weird, um, weird, exciting people that have added to the culture, okay. people that have maybe even taken away from the culture. Okay. That's my thing. I don't just want to be stuck interviewing, you know, people from our scene. I would love to interview like a murderer or oh, wow. you know or like a racist or because i'm just naturally been i'm naturally like inquisitive i like to ask questions i like to think how did you get to this point that you ended up killing five people but you look so normal in front of me how did this happen do you get what i like i like to tap in so if i could model it off anybody i just feel like this is the easiest thing to do i wouldn't say oprah but kind of that thing or like okay. gail king you know how she will sit down with r kelly yeah, yeah. or take a little but charlemagne as well you see you yeah. know how charlemagne dips into the political world then he would you know yeah that type of thing okay that's 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 the goal i look forward to seeing that thank you you're definitely going to get there as well oh thank you so much yeah. it is and it's so nice to sit down with you because you're someone that i've admired really yeah because of course you do the same thing as me but you've been doing it for longer the way you interview is how i like to interview it's like a conversation so it's nice to just sit down with you i wish we had longer no to so talk. do i it's so, so weird because at the beginning you said that you've been feeling nervous yeah before I was really excited. Oh, really? Yeah, because I knew this was not going to be a conversation I'd had before. Yeah, it's just... And I was looking forward to finally having a conversation with someone that was different to the conversation I've had for the last 10 years. So thank you. Have you enjoyed it? I had such a great time. Oh, that's made me so happy. What, what, last question, what do you think about music at the moment? What I think about music? Yeah. I think that the bar, uh, I think that people are, um, so I think that people are congratulating fishes for swimming. <laughs> I, I wish that people, continue to raise the bar. I don't think the bar's being raised at all at the moment. Really? Yeah, I think that we're quite stagnant at the moment and people are just kind of doing what they know is going to be fine. It's not really hate. So I, I would really like for artists to continue pushing the boat out a bit more. Yeah. So I'll send an honorary shout out to, um, I'm not going to name everyone, but I'll definitely shout out Jay Huss, Dave, Shabo. For me, I feel like... Dave is elite, right? Yeah, I feel like they're all people that I hope continue to just, just do something a little bit different. Just, yeah. just spice it up a bit. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not every day, same, same. I agree. Mm. Not every day, same, same. Sometimes switch positions and let your girlfriend live. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. We're out. Thank you, Julie, for coming. <laughs> When is, when is Catfish coming out? When can they find oh, it? Oh yeah, so Catfish is gonna be on. <laughs> Catfish is gonna be on MTV at 9 p.m. It's global. It's all over the world. 180 countries. What? Um, make sure you watch it. Don't make me a meme, please, <laughs> please. But yeah, 21st of April, MTV, 9 p.m. Thank you for having me, Zizi. We out. Bye, Bye guys. guys. <laughs>